All right, ladies and gentlemen, in some of the videos you've been hearing the wind blowing in the background, that's because the swamp cooler is right behind me. While I'm at the desk, it keeps me cool. These days, today it was 115 degrees outside. The hottest it got in here was 84, and that's because I stepped out of the room and went into the other room. But I came back in and cooled it down pretty quickly. The swamp cooler, because of some little simple techniques we did, it actually, before it was about 20 degrees cooler, now it's definitely 35 degrees cooler with the swamp cooler on. So, well, probably a little bit more than 35 because we were 115 outside and we were as low as 74 in here. And I can live with 74. It doesn't have to be air conditioning cool because that would just have me sleeping all day. Well, anyway, that's the swamp cooler noise in the background. Uh, by the way, this is Yandex, but you can use any browser. I don't, I'm not going to use any more media players from this point on. I am going to use a browser to play my videos in from, uh, from now on. Come on now, hurry up. Go ahead, talk. He doesn't want to talk, y'all. It's taking it a second. Oh, uh, now you're going to act like you got cold feet. Oh, shut up now. Anyway, uh, I'm using a browser from now on because using a browser as my... Uh, video player it's a whole lot easier and I really do mean a whole lot easier uh, it takes up less space takes up less systems resources and I'm just using an internet browser you don't need to be connected to the internet to use your browser as your media player alright that's just some information just in case none of you knew now you know that's one to grow on alright now we need to talk about the sap packers Ladies and gentlemen, for the Sat Pack 1, Sat Pack 2s, the original Sat Packers, the Sat Pack Plus, Sat Pack Primes, Sat Pack Omegas, Sat Pack Qs, the Q Packs, we need to educate all of you. You receive tax credits. These are legitimate tax credits. These are not tax credits that we just made up and fantasized. These are tax credits that we can document. We've had several staff members working on the paperwork so as to document. Anybody comes to us can ask us where they came from. We can prove where they came from. We can show the work that we did. We can do proof of work regarding the tax credits. So the tax credit documents you have, many of you have been showing them to your tax agents and been showing them to tax people. Stop doing that. You don't have to show any tax credit paperwork to nobody. Your tax agent asks you, you tell them straight up, I receive this amount of tax credits from this organization. Do you have any proof? And then you simply sit up there and show them the cover letter and tell them what the amount is. I have no problem with them contacting the organization through email and asking us I have no problem with that we won't provide it to you but we'll provide it directly to the company if they want proof I have no problem with that I won't argue with them or anything like that we'll provide them proof but however we're not going to just be doing that just to be doing it okay just want to let you know that's not our job what we cannot do and you all need to understand, you receive the credits from us. We can't tell you how to use them. We can't tell you how to utilize it. We cannot do that. I have to look out for what's in the best interest of you and the best interest of the company. Those are the two number one priorities. You first, company second, and then the members of the company third. But however, I have to do the liability protection thing. I have to protect the organization from liability because that's the games people play. The first thing they're going to want to do is hold, make somebody liable for something. And so the first charge that they'll come with is conspiracy against the United States, economic conspiracy and economic terrorism and all that other bull crap. We're not going to give them that opportunity. So you will have to do your research. But what I can tell you is this. And you need to follow the steps. I just did a video on it. I'm going to do it again. I am tired. It is 9.27 in the evening. This will be over with at 9.45. I am not going that long on this video. I am tired. But I, I've been trying to do this video for five days now. 
I've done it twice, and each time it messed up. So the first thing you need to do, ladies and gentlemen, I've already talked about this on video. First thing you need to do is use your EIN number. Okay? Take that EIN number and put it to the side along with the paper you got from the IRS. After you take that EIN number and, you know what, let's do that. Uh, let's see, I'm going to open up Yandex. And we're going to go here, just real quick, 8-C-A-P-T-A-L, Capital, uh, let's go R-U-S-E-A-U, I believe that's it, I don't know if that's it, uh, and then it's Dementica. The I don't know how to spell Dominica. Come on, hurry up. I ain't got all day. Hold on, y'all. It's gonna correct me. I don't I don't mind it correcting me. Oh, you're gonna do the Russian thing? Y'all know better than that. This is, it's a Russian browser, ladies and gentlemen. It's a Russian browser. Translate. Let me put y'all on pause just for a second. Be right back. Back is itching. Got to go scratch it. If you have a sat pack and you have not been able to get the IRS information, this is the address that is used as the foreign address. 8 Kaptal, Rusal, this is the street address. Rusal Valley is the wonderful little city. And the zip code is 00152, Commonwealth of Dominica or simply Dominica. That is the address that was used. That is the address you use with the IRS to get a copy of your IRS 98 series number or any other number you got from SOTCOM. Okay, that is a foreign EIN number. All right, that is the address for our former registered agent in the Dominica. So, 8 Capital City Rousseau Valley, Postal Code, and uh, State Dominica. Okay, there you go. And let's see, you want my location data? There you go. Sure, get that. All right, now. After you have that letter, you simply are going to need to, now if you don't have a 98 series number, don't worry about it. Just go to the irs.gov website and get a regular EIN number. Click on apply for a new EIN and then just follow the steps and put in the information. Don't be afraid to put in your social security number. It don't matter about social security number. Do not be afraid of the social security number. If you got tax credits, why are you worried about taxes? Why is everybody so afraid of paying taxes? Don't be afraid. Okay? There are too many things you can do to avoid that. So don't be afraid. Stop being afraid. Stop being scared. All right. Let's get back to the conversation. The next thing you will need to do is you need to create, pay attention, a certificate of trust, declaration of trust. We gave you two websites the last time. I'll give it to you again. Yeah, because I took too much time doing that, so I'm going to be beyond the time I said I would. Okay, give it to you again. You're going to go to rocketlawyer.com and thelawdepot.com, either of the two. And you're going to get a sample declaration of trust or a sample certificate of trust. You can even get a sample declaration and certificate of trust by going to Google. But these lawyers put together a simple document for you. All you gotta do is follow the steps. It ain't that hard. Stop making it complicated by overthinking. You just need a simple declaration of trust, certificate of trust. Your SAT pack is the trust agreement. All the information to fill out the declaration of trust and certificate of trust is right there. You even have a declaration of trust incorporated in your SAT pack. Shh, don't tell nobody. I told you it's at least seven to 12 things in one is the SAT packs. We did that purposely for y'all. Now that you have your declaration of trust, certificate of trust, if you went to Rocket Lawyer or thelawdepot.com, you need to 
use a credit card. If you use a credit card to get the account, you're going to have to cancel that within seven days. Just that simple. Just got to remember, put it, make a notation, cancel it. You can cancel it the same day. But I suggest if you're going to go there, download as many forms as you can, as many as you can, so that you have them already. You, you have them stacked up. Anything you're interested in, download it. All right. Now that you have your notice, Declaration of Trust and Certificate of Trust, and you have your EIN document. Now you can take yourself to the bank and say you want to open up a non-interest bearing account. Will you have to show an ID for that non-interest bearing account? Will you have to show a social security number for the non-interest bearing account? Yes, but don't worry about it. You're doing it for a trust or an estate. Either of the two, I would say do it for a trust with an estate. Many of them want to have a letter from a, a stupid court. It's not necessary, but that's what they're going to do. So do it for a trust, people. All right, now that you got your trust bank account set up, now you want to do all everything. You want to get that little debit card, and you want to do all of your payments. Everything goes through that account. You want to do everything through the business from now on. I don't know why you haven't been doing that already. That's where most of your write-offs are going to come in at, people. So when you're doing your taxes, you can take care of the tax credits and everything that way. You're no longer following a 1040. You're following a 1041. <sighs> Lord have mercy. You're following a 1041 from this point on. So that's the first thing you all need to do. Second thing, you have the credits, ladies and gentlemen. The 1099s, uh, 1099A, 1099C have already been done. You don't need to do a 1099C. These are credits. Nobody owes you anything. You don't need to show proof of that. The only thing you have to do is create a statement showing where the credits came from. That's all you have to do. A statement showing where the credits came from. That's all you have to do. A statement showing where the credits came from. That's all you have to do. Now you give that to your tax agent. Oh, I can't work with this. I can't know. I need more. Excuse me, if you need more, then you need to go to the corner store and ask them to give you a five bag, a dime bag, or any other type of bag, but you ain't getting more right here. That's all you're going to get. The law doesn't require me to give you more. You have the numbers. That's all you're here to do is the numbers. You are not here to critique any paperwork. What you guys don't understand is the IRS pays them to kick you to the curb, to ask you for more paperwork. Okay, they get credit for that. Because the IRS, remember, they are tax preparers. They are under the IRS. They are sub-agents of the IRS. If you don't believe me, ask them for their IRS uh, number. I forgot what it's called. I used to have one. I don't have a tax preparer number. It's called a P something, but I, I don't care, ladies and gentlemen. But they have a number. They work for the IRS. They go do training and everything. Okay? You don't have to. You don't have to give up all that paper. All that cheddar. The only thing you have to do is give your receipts for everything else. Create your statement showing where the credits came from. It doesn't have to be a hundred paragraphs. Go to ChatGPT. Go to Bard and ask it to create a simple statement showing that you received tax credits from an organization and the total amount of the tax credits was blah 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 blah. And the tax credits are being utilized, are being assigned to me via blah 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 that's all you have to do is get it to say that and let it put together the paragraph and then you reword the paragraph there you go half the work is done you have your statement that is to accompany your tax paperwork that's it many of you guys are just just thinking way too hard about this it is taxes it's not rocket science look i've looked at a lot of tax paperwork that people have done for me you know they leave so many boxes blank Literally, they don't check every box, but you guys think you got to check every box because you think it's like being in school. You think it's a quiz. You only need to check the necessary box. So if you want to know what the necessary boxes are, you go to ChatGPT and ask it. What are the necessary, what are the boxes that need to be filled out on a regular basis or the average boxes that need to be filled out for the 1041? Then you ask it, what about this box? What about that box? What's this box used for? And you go through the whole form. Many of you guys don't want to take the time to do the work. You want somebody else to do it for you. You think it's too complicated. Instead of just saying, you know what, I'm going to go to ChatGPT. I'm going to ask it about 
box number 14 on the 1041 and box number 56 and I'm gonna do them one box at a time and have it explain it to me and then the next day I'm gonna go ahead and do it do my research then I'm gonna do it I don't know why ladies and gentlemen we have several people who receive 10 million dollars worth of tax credits and they haven't done anything with it just letting it sit there I, I promise you that is a shame we even had somebody who got upset over whatever she got upset with and tried to return the tax credits say what ladies and gentlemen you can't return tax credits tax credits is a one-way ticket it doesn't go the other way tax credits cannot be returned cannot be retransferred to someone else that's why we did an assignment of credits to you guys so you can transfer them we did an assignment of tax credits so you can transfer them okay those were ours so we can assign them to members of the organization that's why you're called a sat pack member you have 0.001% stake in the trust you are members of the organization so you can assign those credits to another party however the people who work for the organization they cannot <laughs> well the reason why they can't is because they are not members under the trust agreement they're subcontractors it's a completely different thing subcontractors are not members of the organization say what subcontractors are not members of the organization subcontractors are not members of any organization but I thought you no that's what you thought that was designed just for certain reasons that certain people continue to do certain things so we have to protect the organization from those people and we just had three people prove that that's what was going on and the organization needs protection from individuals like that all right so I hope that this provides a little bit more clarity for some of you guys on what you haven't done. No, wait, 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 hold on. What do we do next? Why don't you take care of this part first? Well, I already done that. No, you haven't. Because if you already did that, then you wouldn't have been listening to this video in the first place. So shut it up. No, no, seriously, shut up with all of that stupidity. So stay tuned, everybody. We will be giving you updated information. Like I said, we can't tell you what to do, but we can do some pointers as to what normally people should be doing. But you're going to have to do your research. It really is that simple. I can't do the research for you. You are going to have to do your research. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is almost 10 o'clock, 10 minutes till 10. I got to go lay down. I've been up since, what time, 5 o'clock this morning? No, actually 4.30. I forgot. I, I got up and I looked at 61st Street, the AMC series. I'm actually liking that one. So 61st Street, the AMC series. I'm a fan. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to let you go because this man definitely has got to go take a, uh, a break from all of this computer stuff. Hopefully this information proved to be beneficial. We'll speak to you all the next time. Goodbye.